Welcome to my solar cycle update for the 25th of July, 2022. Many of those that are pushing the idea of a grand solar minimum are proclaiming that we are at solar maximum already. This is because their predictions so far have been so badly wrong that the sun is going to go to sleep in the next few years. Their only escape route is the claim that we're already at an early solar maximum and it's going to be all downhill from here. Uh, as I'm going to point out here, there could be nothing further from the truth. Let's take a look at the sunspot number. This graph is always confusing, so I need to explain it. The yellow dashes here are the daily sunspot numbers. They are highly variable, as you can see. The blue curve with the large number of spikes in it are the monthly average sunspot numbers. Uh, they, they show a bit more of a trend more clearly. The red solid line is the monthly smooth sunspot number, and I'll explain a bit more about that later. And we have two predictions on here from the Solar Influences Data Center. One that is just about peaking by the middle of 2023, and the other one that keeps going straight up. Now, the one that's important here is the monthly smooth sunspot number, and for reasons that will become obvious in a minute. It's fairly hard to see it in amongst all this other stuff, so I've taken the data from the SIDC and plotted it separately. That's what comes next. So how is solar maximum determined? Well, they use the smooth sunspot number, and this is it plotted from the beginning of solar cycle 25 to the current time. It's a 13-month running mean, which means you take 13 months and add those together and take an average, and that's your value for the middle month of the 13. So obviously you can't declare solar maximum until you're at least seven months past it. And you actually see a turn down in this smooth sunspot number. At the moment, the smooth sunspot number only goes through to the end of 2021. You can see we are here in July of 2022. So you can see at the very least it's premature to be declaring solar maximum because we have another six to uh, nine months to wait to see what the final numbers are for the smooth sunspot number. Well, let's put everybody on the same page. The maximum from solar cycle 24 was April of 2014. The solar minimum has been determined to be December of 2019. The average sunspot number for the month of July so far is 106. Now, I've got a few days to go but I imagine it'll be in the mid-90s to about 100. The maximum sunspot number for July so far is 158. That was on the 16th of July. Another way of determining when solar maximum is to look when the polar fields reverse, or at least go to very weak values. I've got a picture of the magnetic fields here that have been enhanced so you can see the polar fields more clearly. And I've marked the maxima of the last four cycles, 21, 22, 23, and 24 on here. And you can see at each stage, the polar fields are reversing in one way or another. Let's take a closer look at that. What I've done here is take the top part of the solar disk and put it on the top line here, and then the southern polar area, put it on the bottom line here, and eliminated everything in between so you can see and contrast the two more clearly. You can see at each one of these maxima, the polar fields have got either weak or have actually start to reverse. The interesting one is the 1990 maximum, when at one stage, both poles were negative, which is a bit weird to say the least. 23 is really clear. The polar fields are very, very weak and changing color during this period. Same for solar cycle 24. So one way of looking at this is Let's take a look at the health of the polar magnetic field and see whether it's close to reversing yet to see whether you're at maximum or not. There's an advantage at this particular time as the B angle is quite largely positive. It's plus five degrees. It does go up to about seven. It gives us a better view of the North Polar region. And in six months time, we'll have a, another measurement of this at looking at the Southern Polar region. And here you can see there's a lot more white dots above that that red line, that means in that area, the polar fields are basically positive. Below that line, there is a large number of negative uh, spots. 
Uh, and that means that there's a neutral line, the dashed red line, forming between those two. When you have a neutral line like that, one of the things the sun does is generally create a filament across it. You can see there's this dark line going across the disk here in this 171 angstrom image, and that's a filament, and that's what's called a polar crown filament. These can be quite exciting when the whole thing lifts off. So above that, we have largely positive fields. Below that, we have largely negative fields. And so there's a series of loops that are arcing over that, that neutral line. As time goes by, that negative magnetic field is transported northwards and cancels the positive field of the pole. So the positive field of the pole is continuously being eroded. So the pole will get smaller and smaller and smaller until at solar maximum, it will disappear. Well, how fast is that happening? Here is at the uh, neutral line that we currently have, and I've superimposed that on a magnetogram from a year ago. And if you draw the same line on that, it's down about there. So you can see it's moved about 10 degrees poleward in that one year period. Now that 2022 line is at about 60 degrees north. So if there's got to get to 90, then very simply you could say that it's going to be take another three years. However, of course, there's less and less area for the negative uh, field to cancel, but I, the, it's got to be transported further in order to get to cancel it. So I would reckon three years is a pretty good estimate of how long before that polar region is going to disappear. And as I say, in six months time, we can do a similar calculation for the southern polar region. So what can we conclude from all of this? Well, first of all, we are not at solar maximum yet or anywhere close. The rise in sunspot number shows no sign of leveling off. The last maximum was 2014, assuming a, a typical 11 year solar cycle. That will put the next maximum in the middle to end of 2025 or early 2026. The shrinkage of the polar region indicates those three more years to maximum, which would put it in the middle of 2025. So we're getting quite a consistent picture here. Of course, the sun can always fool us by doing something strange, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. You can ignore any of those folks who are claiming to keep their gravy train going that we're in solar maximum already, and we're about to plunge into a new little ice age anytime soon. They're talking nonsense. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. You can see what's going on in near real time by looking at my Twitter channel, which has the same basic name as my YouTube channel. And so until next time, stay safe and goodbye.